Hey, you hobbyists. Well, as some of you may have expected, my time on Ubuntu was a bust. Ubuntu started out rough right away, but Ubuntu Studio took some time, and now I'm experiencing chop. But the next Ubuntu LTS is right around the corner, and that's Ubuntu 24.04. Uh, I don't remember the code name, but it's right there. So why not stick with Ubuntu Studio until then? And I mean, honestly, I might. It's not bad, and I'm not saying I'm going to jump right away. I'm just kind of making my plans. Now, the game I'm playing in the background is called Brigador, Up and Armored Edition. It's a strange mech shoot -em up smash -em up game. I don't really know what to call it. I've never really played anything quite like it. It reminds me a lot of Rampage because you smash things. The perspective is like Captain Quasar, if you've ever played that. And I guess it kind of reminds me of Mech Warrior because you have mechs, there's also tanks, there's all kinds of weird stuff, but you use money and, and buy new parts for them and I dig it. It's really cool. You smash up buildings and make a mess of things and at the end you use your earnings to buff up your mech and do a bit more damage. It's got a campaign mode that I haven't touched, it's got a story and an absolutely killer soundtrack. You should check it out. So anyway, I used Ubuntu way back in the day, like the start of this channel. It's always been iffy though. I remember when I first started using Linux, way before I started the channel, I couldn't even get Ubuntu to work on my hardware and I wasn't doing anything crazy at the time. I ended up going with Fedora instead because it worked fine on my hardware. It's just that Linux was very limited at that time. Ubuntu has always had a strange smell to it and I've talked to tons of people who say the same exact thing. I've even run into problems with it professionally as a server distro. Ubuntu is based on Debian, but they pick a lot of this or that from Debian's repos and then turn around and patch it with Ubuntu patches. You're going to get those patches whether you're on a server or desktop distro, but I've long thought that these patches were for compatibility because Ubuntu is, or I guess was, considered like the ubiquitous desktop Linux distro. But maybe it's with all these strange Ubuntu packages that cause all these issues. I, I'm not the only person that talks about this, like, just weird bugs and random crashes and stuff that happen on Ubuntu. What else could cause it? So, but what's been happening? I mean, it's just crashes. There really, there shouldn't be any. Like, that's a thing. On Debian, there was nothing. And on Ubuntu, I, I have crashes. It's not just the bug reporter either. It's like KDE, like... KWIN crashes and then it reloads everything. Sometimes it signs me out. Like, I want to underscore that that should not happen not even once. And it didn't on Debian. Like, maybe the whole time I used it, just a couple times. But aside from the crashes, I have other gripes too. Like, there are big updates almost every day. I mistakenly have said that I'm running uh, Ubuntu Studio LTS. So I guess I just have to admit I have a very low tolerance for annoyances like that. I, I don't, I feel like I shouldn't be nagged to update my, comp and update and restart my computer just because a dev push to git commit the trigger to CI to rebuild a package, you know? That's how rolling releases work, like Arch and Tumbleweed and stuff. And it's just obnoxious. I don't, I don't want that. But I don't want to turn this video into dump on Ubuntu, or, or dump on anything, really. I had my hesitations about Ubuntu when I bootstrapped it, and honestly, this is just the canary in the coal mine, so... I don't think I'd be happy if I stuck with Ubuntu now that I've run into these issues, so I'm just going to be proactive and start shopping around now. I do want to say that there's lots that I like about Ubuntu Studio in particular. It's still probably the best looking KDE distro that I've used in a long time, and all of the audio-visual functionality works perfectly fine. So as a workstation distro, it's great. My gripes seem to be solely with Ubuntu. Now before I list a whole bunch of distros that I've been browsing around, I'll say that I've talked about spinning up my own Linux distro for a long time and I might, this might be the time. Back during distro delves, there were a lot of active Linux distros and just a lot more diversity in the desktop and technologies. I've mentioned it before that I feel like the Linux desktop space is consolidated and it's just not all that interesting to me anymore. But I wonder if I could make it interesting by blazing my own trail with a new distro. I don't know how original it would be, but I'm seriously considering it because I just don't particularly fancy any of the distros on offer anymore for various reasons. So the one that gets offered up to me most frequently nowadays is Fedora. Why not Fedora? Well, the main reason why I don't want to use Fedora is the release cycles. There's just big sweeping changes between releases and I don't want that. I want something, I want and need something stable that I can depend on, rely on, and when init systems or other subsystem change between just a couple releases, that's too much churn for me. And another thing that's totally separate from the, the release cycle is I'm not into corporate sponsored distros anymore. 
There have been a couple of high-profile events that have happened over the past couple of years that have really poisoned the well for me when it comes to corporate sponsors and corporate involvement in Linux distros. There's a lot of different Linux distros out there. I mean, you could just create your own, and I might. So why would I go with something that uh, some company that has no vested interest in me could just change it or cancel it? OpenSUSE is another distro that I've used off and on, and I believe a few years ago I said that I would be sticking with OpenSUSE forever for the long haul. And I, that's it. That's really it. I've been there, done that, and I said I was sticking with it, and I didn't. And OGEG had his reasons for moving on, and I'm not going to question it. And furthermore, OpenSUSE always seems like it's in a weird state. Either the company's being bought out or being changed or uh, the maintainers are wondering if Leap is going to be a thing in the future. It's just weird. And it, I mean, that goes back to what I'm saying about corporate sponsorships. I just, I don't want the uncertainty that comes with that, basically. So that's two big name distros down. Well, what about Arch? People have asked about Arch. I've used Arch. I like Arch. I've been thinking about it, actually. But if I do go Arch, it's going to be a full traditional build-it-yourself Arch. No Manjaro, no Endeavor, none of that. I really want my hobby Linux back. I want to build my own and configure it the way that I want without any opinions or any nonsense. And Arch can provide that, but I mean, it's rolling and there's, I know that you can get LTS kernel stuff, but it, what if I want to stick with the older version of Plasma? Can I even do that? I don't know. I guess I need to do a bit more research into Arch to see if it'll fit my needs. And you know, one of the things that makes me hesitant about going back to Debian or any Linux distro really is all of the opinions. I'm sick of everyone having to be right. You have to use Wayland because of this. You have to use Pipewire because of this. You can't do this. You can do that. I just, I'm sick of that. And nowadays, a lot of desktops are hardwired to use custom tools. Isn't, isn't GNOME desktop now dependent on systemd? So you can't even use GNOME without systemd. And I know that that's such a minor thing, but I think that it's systemic. It's like Linux is becoming a monolith and it used to be modular and component driven. And now if you want this, you have to get everything with it and there's just no flexibility. It's weird. But that's the software level. I, I can sometimes forgive that, but what I don't like are meta packages that require and, and install and set up other things like init or logging systems. Debian makes heavy use of meta packages and they do that. It's hard to have a fully independent system based on Debian because if you install this package, then it might grab a meta package and then boom, you have system D and this logger and all this stuff that you didn't ask for. So that leads me back to something like Arch. I was even looking at Gentoo. I don't know. I'm looking at all kinds of stuff. Magia is an interesting one. KAOS is still out there and it kind of fits my requirements, except for it's very opinionated though. I know there's crazy ones like Void and Nix, but I don't know if that's quite what I'm gunning for. You know, I ran EGOS on the Hobby Shop servers for a long time. The first version was Arch-based and it was fine. There are certain things I didn't like about Arch's build system that I really didn't like, but I mean, that's so trivial, it doesn't matter. The most recent EGOS was based on Debian, Debian Stable, and it's probably what I'd be most willing to go back on. It didn't have a desktop since it was just a server OS, but it was very lean and very mean. When I talk about distros like the ones here in the video, I'm thinking of the desktop or user defaults. Server distros are super simple, mainly because Linux is super simple. There's not really much needing to, you know, there's nothing for you to do. I guess like, how are you gonna install software? Like you're gonna use app, do you gonna use DNF, whatever. So an EGOS will probably, if it's based on Arch, it'll be Pac-Man, right? But I don't know what, what desktop it's gonna be. I know it won't be anything like Manjaro where there's a community version for each desktop, but yeah, I'm just pipe dreaming at this point. So I'm gonna wrap it up. If you have any comments or recommendations or Linux distros or anything you want me to look at, let me know. I am all ears. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and listening to this and give a special thanks to my hobbyists, which, keep help, which help keep me afloat here on the hobby shop. If you'd like to join the discourse, you can join the Discord server. We just added a new hobby channel for cars, and I like what people have been posting in there. I started it off with a little short of me reaching into my car's heater fan and getting it started. I don't know where I'd post stuff like that. Like, it's kind of a short, but making YouTube shorts, kind of a lot of work. So I just posted to Discord and people can like it there. I appreciate all your support. And of course, thanks for watching.